Do you like figs? Well, I sure do. I like all kinds of figs. Uh, and today we're going to make a little marinade using this custom blend of balsamic vinegar, black mission fig. You can see I've used about half of this bottle already. I use this in a lot of stuff. Uh, we're going to make a little black mission fig, olive oil, some seasoning, and we're going to dice up some garlic and we're going to make a marinade for these beautiful looking sirloin tender steak. Beef sirloin tender steak. I don't know if that's a real cut, but that's what they're calling them. It's uh, USDA Angus. And yeah, the price is outrageous, but uh, you know what? Everything is these days. We're gonna marinate these for uh, four to six hours. And we're gonna pop them in our Ninja Foodie for some sous vide. Let's make that marinade. This marinade does not have a recipe. These are just flavors I like. And marinades are cool because you can just make them strong, weak, anything you want. So obviously I have a garlic clove here. And the first thing I want to do is break a few of these loose. Now, we want a fair amount of garlic today, so we're gonna go with about that much. And this much, we'll just bag it up for later. Now, here's how I do garlic. You guys probably have your own ways, but first thing I want to do is break these down into pieces. And I like to sort of set the pieces off to the side, even though they've still got skin on them. It's okay, I'm gonna show you a quick and easy way to take care of that. I got a nice fat piece right here. Let's get all the skin off we can by hand. There we go. All right, we just set those over there and we want to dispose of this part. Now for this, uh, any knife will work, but it needs to be a wide blade. You want as wide a blade as you got in your cutting board. It doesn't have to be all that sharp. And here's how I do it. I just nip those little ends hard. Don't want to eat them. Kind of scoot the whatever fell off off to the side. Take that. Take your wide blade. Be very careful. The edges are sharp, so make sure your edges are slightly down. So you don't hurt yourself, smash it. When you smash it, if there were any skin left on it, it it'll literally just fall off. And we'll chop that later. So again, let's, I'm gonna try to leave some skin on this one for you. So you can see what's happening. Scoot that off. All right, I got skin on that one. Boom. And that's the end of the skin. It's, it's done, it's gone. And that's all you gotta do. And you can whip through a, uh, a clove of garlic uh, really fast. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and speed the process up without talking. So what I like to do is do a, uh, kind of a, a pivot deal. So I like to put my hand here and rock like that. See? This gets me a pretty fine chop. And then just kind of pile them all up and do it again. Just kind of mow right through them and one more will do it. Now, another reason that I like to crush them under the blade is because it releases the juice and the flavor versus just cutting them like on a diagonal in slices or whatever. When you smash it, everything opens up for you. All right, grab yourself a bowl. Throw in the garlic. Now for this next part, uh, it's completely up to the up to the um, consumer here. In other words, there's no measuring cups or anything. Uh, you, you probably don't have this brand or version or flavor. So you need to know what yours tastes like. Mine, uh, balsamic, is very thick. Look at that. Because I've let it age. And uh, it's also very, very strong. So I know about the mixture that I want, pretty much a two to one here, but I'm not measuring. And uh, whisk is best when you're trying to mix oil and uh, vinegar, because you know they don't mix together too well. So grab yourself a, a whisk and get in there. And now you need to decide, okay, is that enough for four steaks to marinate in? Yeah, definitely. And we're also gonna give it a little salt and pepper garlic from my favorite seasoning in the world. 
All right, what a good mix. And we're going to use the old finger test. Let's see what it tastes like. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, that's really good. I think I want to touch more balsamic. It tastes a little oily. Let's give it a good mix. And this is pretty much how we're gonna do it. We're just gonna get it the way we like it. It's probably gonna be good. Oh yeah, that did it. So we're gonna have a little bit of sweetness from the balsamic. Mm. And the garlic, this is gonna be so good. If stuff fits in your bag for the marinade, I like to lay it flat. But if you're doing a lot of stuff or bulky things like chicken thighs or something, you probably won't lay flat. But anyway, uh, let's get this. And I just picked up a spoon to help me scrape the last of that garlic out. We don't wanna miss out on anything. There you go, guys. One beautiful, delicious marinade. And over the course of the next few hours, we'll be um, flipping this over in the refrigerator several times. And you want to just go ahead and press out whatever air you can by hand. And later on, I'm going to show you how to get the rest of the air out when we do the sous vide. If you've never seen one of my sous vide videos, I'm going to show you. Uh, how easy it is and also how to get the rest of the air out of this bag and we're just going to use a little bit of science here pretty simple uh, make sure you put enough water in your pot to cover whatever it is you're cooking take your ziploc baggie and what i like to do is just crack it open just enough to get my finger in it see that my fingers in it and what we're going to do is use water pressure to force out the air so we're slowly going to submerge and the reason my finger is in there is to keep so I know where the hole is where the air is escaping so I don't let any air into the bag I mean I'm sorry so I don't let any water into the bag so just press until it's completely submerged and the water pressure will push out the air and zip up your little corner and you're done you're ready for sous vide just like that. All right, different model foodies will get you to sous vide different ways. Mine is that little smart lead thing with the slider. Turn it on, pick sous vide right there. Pick your time, pick your temperature. 130 is what I want. I know that's a little low uh, for, for us, but uh, we're gonna put a char on the top of the steak. So that will raise the internal temperature slightly to about 135-ish and crisp up, you know, brown up the, the outside. Inside lane and exits include to the pavement between the lines i'll keep my gate straight ahead as the last stop flies by no more waiting for the gun to fire no more walking through revolving doors i've gone around once and i don't need to go around anymore break away forget your sober case stop dwelling on empty words stop stalling in the doorway and cancel the cruise control switch in the manual the steaks are out of the foodie. It's three hours. And I've drained out most of the excess marinade. And I'm just going to give them a little pat dry here. And I'll explain why in a minute. Just give them a little a couple paper towel pats here. Can't get them completely dry, but we're going to get a little of this excess moisture off. You'll see why in just one second. Now you might be saying, Scott, they don't look too good. They look a little gray. Well, that is true. That's what happens when you sous vide meat. But I'm gonna fix that. Remember those squash I was cooking? Well, they are finished, cooked perfectly, and I've got me a nice pan full of oil and butter, and we're gonna put the steaks right in and finish them up. Now that pan is hot, guys. So this is only gonna take a couple minutes per side. And that's what we want to hear. Now, I could have also done this in the air fryer, 
um, by using the metal rack and then putting them up high. But I already got this pan hot. Might as well use it. And by the way, this is a Ninja Foodie skillet. It's called a Never Stick. So technically, I'm still using the foodie. Remember, we cook these at 130 degrees, so we want to be careful not to overcook them. And they're not going to overcook. This is only going to take, this process is only going to take a few minutes. Look at that. We're already, we're already getting the colorization um, on these steaks. They are looking 100% better already. Oh, man. I'll show, I'll get these out into the better light here for you in just one second. Let's finish them up. There you have it. Beautiful. 130 degree internal temp. Nice, crisp, dark tops and bottoms. And I'm going to get one of these on a plate for you and we'll cut right into it. Oh, yes. Very, very tender. You can already see. That is a perfect pink color. 130 degrees. Look how tender that is. Unbelievable. Let's take a bite. Is that a beautiful piece of meat or what? Crispy, dark on the outside, pink, tender on the inside. Let's try it out with the uh, marinade that I made. Hmm. Just a touch of sweet from the balsamic. A uh, little bit of the garlic, not overpowering, uh, not too oily. I think that just came out perfect. Let me build the entire uh, plate for you with the squash and everything. You can see how we're, how we're going to have our dinner. If you watch my last video, you'll kind of know why I'm doing what I'm doing. I need to lower my carbs. Uh, my A1C was through the roof. And um, so it's already, I've already lost that little fuzzy feeling in the head. I can already tell my blood sugar is dropping. And I'm going to continue that. So I've got no carbs. I've got no carbs and for a side dish we do have a pre-made salad with kale cabbage lettuce uh, the dressing has about 10 carbs per serving uh, we're not even going to even have part of a serving so um, total here maybe three carbs total and that's perfectly fine so that's it i want to thank everybody for watching um, if you got any comments if you like my marinade uh, let me know if you've got your own kind of marinade. Definitely put it in the comments. I know everybody would love to, to see that. And if you haven't tried sous vide, you are missing out. It is the most tender, perfectly cooked steak, pork chops, even vegetables, whatever you want to put in there. It is perfect every single time. And I use sous vide, oh, geez, probably two to three times a week. I just love it. We'll see you soon. Inside lane, missing exits, include to the pavement.